we? The decisive decision maker in our family, Jane Sanders. so many familiar faces and just just to be here feels really good uh, I'm here as kind of a character witness for this guy but you know him you know him as well as we do uh, and I think I just want to say um, I am his wife for 31 years his co-worker for 38 years and uh, there's nobody in this world on this planet that I trust more and can count on more. And I would say, yeah. you can too. He's my choice for the next president of the United States. I hope he's yours. <laughs> now, that's what you said tonight. Tomorrow, not so sure. I want to thank my son, Levy, for being here as well. start off in a, kind of a different way than I usually do. Uh, we have been winning a lot of support in New Hampshire and Iowa and all over the country on the ideas that we are fighting for. Because I think working people all over America understand that there's something wrong when in the wealthiest country in the history of the world, half of our people are living paycheck to paycheck. People understand that there is something wrong when we have massive levels of income and wealth inequality. And I'm proud that we have forced that issue into mainstream discussion. Because it is simply immoral and unacceptable that we have three people in America owning more wealth than the bottom half of our society. It is unacceptable that when the top 1% own more wealth than the bottom 92% at the same time. We have a half a million people sleeping out on the streets or in emergency shelters tonight. Can you believe that? That's what we got. So the working families of this country are demanding an economy that works for all of us. So I'm gonna get into what that means in a moment. And not just <clears throat> the people on top who are doing phenomenally well. But a lot of people with Democrats are saying, well, Bernie, you're right. You're right on healthcare, you're right on climate change, you're right on all these issues. But can you beat Donald Trump? And the answer is, and the answer is, and I say this with absolute sincerity, with all due respect, and I do respect my Democratic voters. I know them all, I like them all. And I'm not here to say that I'm the only person who can beat Trump. But what I am here to say is I think I am the strongest candidate to beat Trump. And why is that? Now obviously, me and all of you who are supporting our campaign, you know, we kind of are prejudiced about this. But why is that so? Let's just analyze it a little bit. The truth of the matter is what I know what Trump knows, what the Republican establishment knows, is that the only way that we are gonna beat Trump is when we have the largest voter turnout in the history of this country. And what I wanna say here, and I'm gonna talk about Trump in a minute, but what I wanna say is do not underestimate Donald Trump. Anyone here who thinks, oh, Trump, my God, anybody can beat Trump, wrong. He is going to be a very, very tough opponent. He lies all of the time. He will merge government agencies with his campaign because he does not respect the rule of law. He will have much of the billionaire class behind him and he will have endless amounts of money. Right? So that is the reality. Now why are we the strongest campaign to defeat Trump? Because I think our campaign more than any other of my Democratic colleagues is the campaign of energy 
is the campaign of excitement, is the campaign that can bring working people and young people out to the election in a way that we have never seen before. those candidates who say, you know, we don't need bold ideas, you don't have to energize young people or working people, let's just do it the way we have done it for 50 years. Well, you do it that way, you're not going to have the kind of turnout that you need in order to defeat Trump. The way you get a turnout is you speak truth to power. The way you get a turnout is when millions of people who right now, they're sitting home and they say, who cares about me? Who cares about the fact that I'm making 10, 11 bucks an hour, can't afford to take care of my family? Who cares that I'm spending 50% of my income on housing? Who cares that I can't go to the doctor when I'm sick? Who cares that I can't afford childcare? Who cares that my kid is unable to go to college? Or maybe we'll leave school 50 or $100,000 in debt. Who cares? Who cares about me? And the answer is, we do care about the working families of this country. And I'll just, you know, again, and I say this, and you have to trust me on this one, I know all the candidates. Some a lot better than us, some I've known for 20 or 30 years. All right, and I like them. So this is not here knocking anybody. But I just don't know how you defeat Trump when you end up getting substantial sums of money from billionaires who are funding your campaign. Is this really the idea, the energy that is going to galvanize the American people? I don't think so. I don't think so. So what I am very proud of, and I know there's been a lot of talk about uh, fundraising uh, recently, but what I am very proud of, and I want all of you to be very proud of, Understand that you are part of a campaign which has received more campaign contributions from more people than any campaign in the history of the United States of America. You know what the average used to be? I used to be, last time around, I said it was $27. It's not. It's gone down. It's now $18. It's the average contribution. You know why? It's got a lot of young people, a lot of lower income people who are making $5 or $10 contributions. And I am deeply moved and overwhelmed sometimes by that level of support. There was a piece last time around in the LA Times, and the guy got on the phone and he called up people who were contributing. And you have people who are trying to make it on social security, people who make a nine bucks an hour contributing to the case. I couldn't read the whole article because it was so moving to me that people who had no money or very little money were making contributions to our campaign, believed in what we believe. So I think the reason that we're gonna win this election is not because of the TV ads. Anybody seen our TV ads here at the Hampshire? Yeah. All right, we got TV ads. Now we got digital ads. Now we got radio ads. Yeah, we got all that stuff. But you know why we're going to win? Because of you. Because at the end of the day, it's not TV ads to win an election. That helps. It's important. It is, especially in a small state like New Hampshire, it is person-to-person contact. It is the need to go out and talk to your friends and your family and your coworkers and say, you know what? It's not good enough to complain anymore. You're going to have to get involved in the political process. You know, there are millions and millions of people in this country who for a variety of valid reasons, I'm not here to attack them, have given up on the political process. All right, they see the rich getting richer, and they're worried what kind of life their kids will have. They hear all kinds of speeches, and nothing much happens to improve their lives. So I can understand why a lot of people are cynical about the political process. But what we have to do is reach out to those people and say, you know what? This is it. This this election is whether or not we retain democracy. This election is about whether or not we are going to deal with the literally existential crisis of climate change. Okay.
So that's what we need from you. We need your help to reach out. And when you do that, I'm quite confident we're going to win here in New Hampshire. We're feeling very good about Iowa. We're feeling very good about Nevada. Feeling very good about South Carolina. I just came back from California. And I love California. I really do. Except I'll tell you, it's, it, it's funny being in California where it was 70 degrees and people you're hearing Christmas carols. This feels more comfortable to me than the New Hampshire and Vermont. Um, let me say a, a few words about uh, some of the issues that we are feeling very strongly of. Okay. Feeling very strongly about. And, and, and I want to also thank all of you and all the people in New Hampshire for this. Four years ago when I came here and I told people what I thought needed to be done in America, I was attacked by the political establishment, by the uh, economic establishment, by the media establishment. It was a, oh, Bernie, you know, nobody believes in your ideas. You're too you're far out, you're too crazy, and all that stuff. And then we won New Hampshire overwhelmingly. So what, what does that mean? It's not just here to say thank you, and I do say thank you for that, but it's not me. What the people of New Hampshire showed is that it's not that our ideas were too bold, it is that the general trend of the Democratic Party were not dealing with the real issues that were on people's minds. And what New Hampshire did in Iowa, Iowa as well, woke up the country to say that the ideas that we were talking about were not far out ideas, they were the ideas that the families, the people of this country actually believed in. And that has transformed in a very fundamental way the whole political discourse in this country. And New Hampshire played a very, very important role in that process. So thank you, New Hampshire. Yeah. Four years ago, I said 